Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And first of all, let's just address the elephant in the room. I appreciate, I've always said that I'll only ever do this show on weekdays and today is not a weekday, it's a Saturday. Um, obviously, those of you that watch the show every single day will be aware that I didn't get a chance to do one yesterday, so this is just my way of just filling that gap. Uh, I know I did say originally I'd do one straight after work, but unfortunately something came up after work and it actually get in the house until like 11 30 and then i need some tea and i was tired so yeah i'm sure you all understand but let's get into it um there has been a few bits of of information over the last couple of days not as much as you would have hoped for you know a thursday and a friday um but um fabrizio romano did tweet late on thursday night um, that Burnley have just completed all documents for the Lucas Pires deal, now all sealed with Santos. Obviously, Santos is his parent club, even though he spent last season on loan at Cadiz in Spain. Oh, did you pronounce it Cadiz? I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we play him in a friendly, won't we? Um, but he goes on to say, new signing for Parker, as revealed last week. And then, as you can see on the screenshot on your screen, now he includes the tweet um, where he said last week uh, that Burnley have agreed a deal to sign Brazilian defender Lucas Perez from Santos and we are expected to pay around a 2.5 million euros fee plus a sell-on clause. Obviously, when we come to sell him on, we will um, have to give a percentage of that to Cadiz. So yeah, it, like I said to you before, I know for a fact he's been here this week. He's been training with the team. I was unsure how the work permit situation worked. I didn't realise he could be training with us, but apparently you can. You can train with us, you just can't play in uh, competitive games without a work permit. So I believe that's what someone's told me on Twitter. So again, if that's slightly off, I do apologise. But he's been with us this week, he's been training, he's been at Barnfield or Gawthorpe, whatever it's called these days. I believe the sponsorship run out. Um, but yeah, he's been with the club, so... I would suspect this last document that we had to get over the line was a work permit. Again, that's just an educator guess more than anything. Uh, but with him being here this week, uh, but not being officially announced yet, it, it must be a work permit, right? Or something along them lines. But yeah, Perez is here. He's, like we said on a, on a show like two or three days ago, he's, he's even been visiting churches in the local area because obviously with him being South American... He'll be very, very religious. So, um, yeah, he's definitely here. Uh, he's definitely coming. I know I've seen a lot of people just constantly saying to, to Burnley admin and, and stuff on Twitter, like, just announce Perez. Where is he? Where is he? Just calm down. He's here. He's, um, he's going to be announced when all these documents are signed, sealed, delivered. And, and with him tweeting that late on Thursday night, I did half expect an announcement on Friday, if I'm honest. So, again, not sure what the holdup is now. You would have thought that they've done all the media and stuff like that with him. So I would presume it's just ready to go. Maybe we'll see one on Monday, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But um, yeah, he's here. It's all signed. It's all It's all done. We're just, we're just waiting on the announcement now. Elsewhere, some talk of outgoings, and this time it's Josh Brownhill. Now, according to Graham Bailey, Stephen Gerrard is exploring the possibility of bringing Burnley star Josh Brownhill to Saudi Arabia. Of course, Gerrard is the manager at Al Etifak. Um, and uh, Bailey goes on to say, Gerard wants Brown and Al Etifat, but there is competition from the Premier League and Europe. Now, I've not even tweeted this one myself off the Turfcast account, um, just because Graham Bailey and HITC, they, I'm not saying they make stuff up because I would never ever suggest that people do that, but I feel like it's a lot of agent talk goes through them. I know um, they got a lot of stuff wrong in the Burnley managerial Hunt, um, Palava, whatever you want to call it. And I, I would be astounded if uh, Josh Brownell goes to Saudi Arabia. Not from a personal point of view. And I do think he is good enough. And I, and I think I think Josh would... Well, I don't know. I, I don't think he's at a stage in his career where potentially um, Saudi Arabia would be the next move. But at the same time... But put it this way. I know some people don't like... Um, the Saudi Arabian way of doing things and, and the fact that they're just throwing loads of money at stuff and, and getting all these players. But Josh is 28, right? And yes, you may have just seen me tapping away to quickly get that up on my screen. But Josh is 28. He's not at a stage in his career, I feel, where Saudi Arabia is the next logical step for him. Like, I don't see an issue with players going to Saudi Arabia and securing a load of money. If you can get a load of money for doing a job you're already doing, then take it. Like, say, for example, if... 
I don't know, the Saudi Arabian government said, do you want to do a podcast on Saudi Arabian football for £10 million? I'd say, absolutely, where do I sign? Um, so I have no issues with, with, with uh, footballers going over to Saudi Arabia. I just don't feel that Josh Brown is at the right time in his career. I, I genuinely believe Josh will be here for us next season. I know, I've, I know I've gone full circle on that. Like I said, when we triggered the contract extension in his contract to keep him here for this year, I genuinely felt that we were doing that just so we could sell him on. But I don't know. I feel now that he will be here next year uh, and perhaps go on a free. Um, and if we get promoted again and he's he's one of the best players in the championship, like he was last time, in my opinion, I know for some reason a lot of people um, didn't think he was, um, then then he goes on a free with my blessing. Um, but hopefully, we, hopefully we're in that predicament this time in 12 months when we've been promoted, if we've been promoted. But yeah, I'm not sure for me that uh, Saudi Arabia is the right move. Uh, for Josh, but in the actual article that Graham linked from HITC, which is actually, um, oh no, it's not, it's, it's yeah, I'm going to say it's actually written by another journalist, but it says it's written by Sean Webley, and then it says exclusive from Graham Braley, so he's obviously just written up what Graham's told him to write up. Um, but the article itself says HITC understands that English midfielder um, wanted by Brentford, West Ham, and Wolves is attracting interest from the Saudi Pro League. And particular Stephen Gerrard's El Etifak. Um, nothing much in it really other than that. Um, it goes on to say about how Jordan Henderson played under him but since moved back. That's a point. Would, would Josh look at that and think maybe it's not for me? Here we go, a little further down into the article. It says, Sources have told HRTC that Gerrard is exploring the possibility of bringing English midfielder Josh Brownell to Etifak. HRTC understands Brownell is top of his wanted list and... Are the Saudi side is awful, awfully written, and the Saudi side are now weighing up a potential offer for the Burnley man, the former Bristol City boss Dean Holden, currently Gerald's number two in Saudi. Okay, maybe that that you know bridges it a little bit. Um, with the Bristol City connections has close hand knowledge of Brownell after taking him to Ashton Gate, and he's understood to have given his boss a glowing report of the midfielder's abilities. I mean, look. I'm not for one second suggesting this is made up or anything. Gerard may well want him. I'm not saying for one second that any of these reports are just plucked out of a hat because I don't. I know a lot of people think that journalists do that, but as somebody who dabbled in journalism in the past very unsuccessfully, admittedly, um, it's just not what they do. A source would have told Graham that source may well be Josh Brownell's agent trying to drum up interest or or even somebody from Aletifak just trying to keep their, get their name out there. I'm not sure. But the report from Graham Bailey, who is one of the main people at HITC, um, says that Stephen Gerrard are exploring the possibility of bringing Burnley star Josh Brownell to Saudi Arabia. But yeah, I'd, I'd take that one with a pinch of salt if I were you. Finally from me, and we actually have some friendlies in place. Hallelujah, we've been told about the uh, the club, sorry, pre-season plans but unfortunately there is none in this country that you can attend obviously we weren't expecting any to be at the turf due to the pitch renovation we knew that the club had asked for the first game to be away from home so that would suggest they weren't going to play a friendly and that's obviously become the case again but I would have liked an away day you know somewhere in this country that we could have gone to uh, we, we will be having an away day but it is again to Spanish club um, Cadiz Cadiz however you pronounce it um, but the club have announced that that will be on Sunday the 4th of August, but they don't know the venue yet and they will release it uh, when they know the venue. So to basically telling people not to book any flights to the Cadiz area where um, where they play their games because it won't be there. It will be probably um, at another venue somewhere in Spain. I would imagine. And in fact, I'm just guessing that it's somewhere in Spain. It, it could be anywhere. It, the the actual, actual line from the club says, please note... The venue for the Cadiz match is still to be confirmed and supporters are advised not to book travel arrangements at this stage. The club will provide a further update in due course. So I'm just guessing it could be somewhere in Spain. It could be somewhere in this country. And after all that stuff I've just said about not being able to go to a game in this country could become false. I mean, your guess is good as mine. It, it could be anywhere, but we will see. Hopefully the club announced that pretty soon enough. And I did tweet saying it's a disappointment that there's none in this country that we can get to. And a few people were saying back, like, saying, oh, I've got no problem with the club doing it behind closed doors. It's about fitness. It's not about fans. It is. That is the prime primary target, is, is building players' fitness up, right? And, and Scott Parker having a look at his new team. But still, just give us one. 
just give us something that we can attend. Like fans want to follow this club. We want to show this club that we, you know, we're there. We want to go to the games. We want to see these new players and the new manager. So yeah, I guess we'll have to wait till Luton. Um, but yeah, not a massive issue. I just would would like to go to a game. And obviously, if if this Cadiz game is in Spain, that's one hell of a commitment, isn't it? And obviously, some of us who do three, four jobs and have a young young family will will find it difficult. But yeah, we finally do have some pre season plans. They're not great in terms of a fan perspective, but again, like I said, that's not what it's about. But yeah, uh, that's it from me. Like I said, not too much out there. Um, it, we're back on Monday. I'll, I'll I'll carry on doing the show every single midweek um, midweek day. Sorry, weekday from next week. Um, and just some Turfcast news. This show will now be available from Monday as a podcast as well. So you'll be able to download it as a podcast. It will not be on the Turfcast feed though. It will be on its own separate feed. I think I mentioned it on a show a few weeks ago. I didn't want it being released on the Turfcast feed and just clogging up the Turfcast feed because people get fed up of, of, of daily news dropping every single day on a podcast feed. So I'm going to keep the Turfcast feed for the debate shows, the journalist shows, pre-games, post-game stuff. And this one will be in its own new feed and not sure if it's there yet like i said i had to speak to turf uh, to turfcast i am turfcast um but i had to speak to talk sports and they have said that they have arranged it and they have sorted it for me so search now claret daily news and if it's there give it a subscribe from monday if you want to listen to this while driving to work or driving home from work then you'll be able to do that on the Clarets Daily News podcast feed. I will be tweeting links to it, so if you can't find it, it may well be that it's not there yet, but if you can't find it, don't worry. I will be tweeting links to it every single day, and then you'll be able to subscribe to it through one of them links. But yeah, a um, bit of Turfcast news there at the end, but um, yeah, sticking to the Burnley news. Perez is San Seal delivered, but just not officially announced yet. Let me know what you think about that. Brownhill. I know a few of the other pages have been going mad for this and, and and stuff, but like I said, I didn't even tweet it. HITC and Graham can be very hit and miss, and more miss than hit in my opinion, um, and all the stuff they said about the manager situation um, was very miss more than hit. Um, so I've not really, really give that one that much attention, apart from in this show. I need to talk something to talk about, right? Uh, and the friendlies as well. Let me know what you think about the friendlies, actually, because that was interesting about me putting a tweet up saying, I'm disappointed with this. And then a lot of people will say, well, it's not about that anymore. And maybe I think some people will just agree with the club no matter what they do. Uh, and some people will do the opposite as well, to be fair. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like there should be some stuff that we can attend in pre-season personally. Probably because throughout my entire life, that's what I've done. I've had a season... What following Burnley, a summer off, then you get the buzz again going to the pre-season friendlies, right? And then you start thinking, yes, the season's coming, the season's starting. Fingers crossed some of them are broadcast on Clarets Plus, but I would doubt it considering they're behind closed doors because they're behind closed doors for a reason. The Cadiz game might be, probably will be broadcast on, on Clarets Plus, but again... Any information, keep your eyes on the club socials and the club website and any inform information that you may well want to see about rumours of incomings and outgoings, then don't forget to follow Turfcast. But thanks, everybody. We were back with the show on Monday and that one will be the first one that is available as a podcast as well.